Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everyone. How are you guys doing? Okay? Just, just okay? Or? No? All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming here on a Friday afternoon and uh, participating in something that I would have loved to do as a student. Um, we're here because we, uh, many of you are in my classes, some of you are just interested in, in geometric uh, patterns and art and mathematics. Uh, we're at UT Dallas, and um, uh, we're going to explore and sort of unlock the uh, patterns of Islamic art, of geometric Islamic art. Uh, as we've seen, many of you in my classes and some of you are aware of, is that geometry plays an important role in uh, historical Islamic art. We see it in manuscripts, we see it on architecture, we see it on uh, objects, and we see it in things that are used in daily life as well as things that are uh, uh, reserved for luxury. Um, it, it was, uh, it's an artwork that was started early on in the medie medieval period, in the 8th and 9th century, and even all the way up to today, you won't visit any country around the world where, so Islamic civilization sort of spread all the way from India uh, to, uh, uh, to the borders of China, and then all the way to the Atlantic, to Morocco and Spain. So you can go to any of these countries and see um, that geometric patterns have played a large part in the aesthetics of these countries and, and these cultures um, that fit into the Islamic world. And it's not only used by Muslims, but uh, you, you can sort of see that all cultures living in these geographical boundaries um, have appreciated this form of art. Now, the big question is, how is it done? Uh, and today, uh, we actually have a artist that is uh, a, UTD, a member of the UTD community, uh, Sharmin Siddiqui. Uh, she's a local artist here in, in the Dallas area. And she has been, uh, uh, she, she all, she's also, she's an expert in geometric art, and she's also an es expert in Islamic tehdib art, which is the art of, of, of flowering and creating sort of uh, arabesque motifs within these geometric shapes. Um, some of her artwork is on display uh, uh, around the room, so after you're done with your project today, you can actually go and look up close to see how some of these patterns are intricate and how color brings them to life as well. Um, and so she's going to lead us through a workshop starting with a compass, which you should have received in your bag, a pencil and an eraser. That's pretty much all you'll need. If you haven't already, uh, take a few sheets of paper, tape it on the surface of your table uh, so that it doesn't move around while you are uh, following her steps. Um, she's going to guide us from the, very, from the very beginning of how to create a, an, an intricate pattern, and you'll see that Islamic geometry uh, uh, and geometric patterns are uh, steps of combining different shapes, different uh, um, circles, and different patterns together to create something intricate and something beautiful. So again, thank you all for coming here on Friday afternoon. Um, uh, I, I am very excited to see such a great crowd, and I want you all to join me in welcoming Sharmi. You can hear me, right? Yeah, perfect. So, I'm really excited uh, and nervous. Okay, so again, um, I'm really excited. I'm so thankful to our professor. Um, so let's just dive in. First of all, uh, we need a horizon line, uh, a very uh, straight horizontal line in the center, and uh, the easiest way or the accurate way to make a horizontal line would be measuring both sides and then, you know, have the center. So for me, the center would be uh, 4.25. I'll mark these two points on both sides. And um, I'll be slow. So I've marked two points in the center so that I can have a horizontal line. I will draw everything very dark, but please draw very lightly um, because 
again, um, it will, we will start in three stages, and um, you will get confused if you make really dark lines. Okay. So once we have the horizontal line, we need the center uh, of the page. Um, do your best to find the center. For me, the center would be five and a half right here. So I just made a point just so that our pattern can be in the center. And I can show you what the three stages are while we are waiting. Okay, so whenever you're ready, just look up so that I can start. So I'm uh, measuring um, one, four, you can see it. okay. So I'm measuring 1.25 uh, inches, just because it will fit in our paper nicely. So you can go smaller, but don't go bigger. So one and a half is a good size, right? I did one and a half. Yes. So um, geometry has symbolism. So I will just speak a little bit about symbolism. We start with the point. It's a small circle. Life starts with, uh, geometry starts with a circle. Starts with this point. I'm placing my pointy part on the center point and I will make a circle. If this is a horizon line, I'm starting from the sunrise. I'm going to midday. I came to sunset, midnight, and back. So, okay. So again, um, so the, uh, this would be the mother circle because um, all the patterns start with a circle. Uh, if you want to make a square, hexagon, octagon, everything starts with a circle. So a circle is the mother of all uh, forms. So now we need to, oh, I'm, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> Hopefully it's clear, right? Circle is also a symbol for unity. Okay. With the same radius, maybe your compass might shift, so keep on checking if it's the same radius, um, just because, you know, it does tend to shift. Um, do your best. Um, so we, we have created this intersection right here, this point. I am going to place my compass here. Make sure your compass is going over the center point. Okay, just make sure before you commit to it and make one more circle. Okay. Don't forget the mother circle. Okay, this is like the main circle because you might get confused. So this is my main circle. We've also created this shape, which is fine. It's okay.
So we will go around this main circle uh, to make five more circles. Okay, so we have one. Let's make second one. Here is the center. We just created one more center right here. We are placing our compass be very accurate. And we are probably you all did make this in high school. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, so this is, we are making the creation diagram. Okay. So from this point, I made one more circle. Just make sure it's going through the center because it might shift. And do let me know if I need to repeat or slow down, okay? <laughs> okay, third circle from the point that we just made right here. Again, make sure it goes through the center. Next would be this point. I can, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so next here. Then the sixth and the last circle. Okay. So this is called a creation diagram um, because it refers to the world being created in six days and seventh day was the rest. It, uh, it can also be the seven days of the week. Okay, and then this is the flower of life called the flower of life. So that's our first stage of this pattern. Okay. 
So all the points are important. It's not um, coincident that we have these points. Every point has a purpose. Okay, so we have created six big petals, right? Six big petals and six small petals. We have these points, these points. All of these points are very important to make our next grid, okay? Once everyone is ready, we can kind of make it confusing a bit. Okay, let's focus on the big petals, okay? So these two points, we need to make a guideline, make it very light. I will make it dotted, uh, make it very light line because these are only, um, it's, it's a grid, you know, it will help you make the whole pattern. So I'm taking these two points and making a very light line. I am obviously using a pen, so it will be dark. I want you to make really light guidelines and extend it outside also. We are focusing on the big petals for now. Make sure it's going through the center. Take your time. I think we won't need compass anymore. Yeah, we won't. Okay, then we have these two points. Again, the big petals. And we are making a guideline, very light line. You can make dash, you can make dotted line. Just don't get confused with these lines. Extend them outside of the creation diagram. You can see it, right? Yeah. Then whoever is ready, we will do the same thing with these two points. Again, the big petals for now. We've divided the circle in six parts. So this, this pattern is called a six-fold pattern because the circle is divided into six parts. We actually have more points, right? So the smaller petals, we will um, make more guidelines dividing the circle into 12 parts, okay? So I'm taking these small petals and making Again, guidelines, very light lines. Make sure it's going through the center. This is already divided with our horizontal line. We have these two small petals, and that's our last gu guideline for now.
So next, how about I show you? Okay, so next we need to make our hexagon. Since the circle is already divided into these six parts with the petals, we will make our hexagon by connecting these points, okay? By connecting the petals. So I am connecting these two points with a straight line, these two points. Where the small petals are, and I am using my darker pen. Um, don't use a very dark line because again, this is the second stage. It's not the final stage. So I would recommend not using a very dark line. So we're making a hexagon. Hexagon is a symbol for perfection and um, heaven. Hexagon by connecting the small petals. Right here. Okay. I hope I'm not too slow or too fast. And again, these two petals. So again, all these points are important. Uh, we will t look at these two points, but then extend the lines outside. We are not making the line inside the hexagon, but we're extending the line outside till the edge of the outer circles. Okay, so we are taking these two points from the petal and extending the line outside till the outer circle. Do the same thing on these two points. Again, extend the line outside these two points. Okay, let's do the same thing with these, these petals. Okay, so we're making two diagonal lines. Okay, so let's connect, I guess, these two. Okay, these two. Right, am I right? I think I'm right, yes. Extend the lines outside till the outer circle. So we're taking these, these points, making two diagonal lines. So 
these two points and I extended the lines outside. I will do the same thing with these two points. If I need to repeat, please let me know. I can draw fast on the side. Okay, so we are making two diagonal lines here. And it is going outside of, yeah. So we're making a um, semi-regular grid. So it's not all squares or not triangles. It has different shapes. Okay, so we are making squares and triangles. Okay. Then we will do the same thing on these lines, these points. We will connect these two points and eesh, what did I do? Okay. You're fast. You're done. <laughs> okay. Okay, these two points, and then I'm making the line go outside. Since you're done. So now we need to connect our squares. We have six squares and we have six triangles, right? So we will connect them to make the semi-regular grid. We have hexagon, which is a symbol for heaven, and we have the square, which is a symbol for earth, and we have triangle, <clears throat> which is the symbol for fire. Okay, so we are connecting our squares and triangles. We will be done with our second stage. Sorry? S symbol uh, for hexagon is um, perfection and heaven. And then square is the earth and triangle is the fire. And circle is the unity. It brings all the shapes together. So I'm simply connecting these points to make the grid. slow. Just enjoy the pattern. Don't be in a hurry. So this pattern is actually, I've made that design with this pattern. So if you want later on, um, you can look at that. So I tessellated this design, I think, three to four times. You can just be very creative with these simple grids. So 
if I was at home, I would have used um, transfer paper to make my last final stage. How about I show you? Should I show you? Okay, why not? Okay. Um, and then we can tessellate this. So first, we are making the six-pointed star in the center. Okay, and then we'll do the next steps later. So again, the six-pointed star. Remember, we made these grid lines. These are important. Okay. Uh, we will start with a triangle. Okay. So our triangle is right here, but we will stop at our guideline. So we start from here, stop at the guideline. We start from here and stop at the guideline. Okay, so let me make it and then we'll see. Okay, I, so these guidelines, I just stopped at the guideline, those dotted dashed lines. Okay, so we are making a triangle. We will do the same thing here. Should I repeat this? Everybody is confused. Yeah. So we have our hexagon. Look at these two points. Okay, and we are making a straight line, but we are stopping where our guideline was. Remember, we made these really light lines. So I started from the hexagon. Do you have it? Do you have it? Yeah? Okay. Okay. So I do the same thing here. I'm making a triangle. So I start from this point, stop at the guideline. And I start from this point and stop at the guideline. You can, if you, like, you can even do it all the way, but then erase it with your pencil, but then. No. So again, hexagon, and then we made two lines, stopped at the guideline. We are making a triangle first, one triangle right here. The next is these two points and then I stop at the guideline. Our final stage is done. No, not really. Since you have a pencil, if you're going all the way, you can simply erase it. Okay. We do the same thing. We make one more triangle. Okay. So we are making a straight line from here till the, um, till the guideline, from this point till the guideline. Okay. Right here. Ta-da, the star. So we are completing our triangle, making it a six-pointed star, taking these two points and stop at the guideline right here. Is it making sense now? Yeah. Good, good. Kind of. It will. In a year, it will. OK, the last line right here. Again, we stop at the guideline.
and now we need hexagons, right? So for that, we need to make these lines, but then we need to know where to stop, right? So we need more guidelines. This will be the last tricky part, okay? So we need these guidelines. You can do it, it's right here. We are making hexagons. Okay, actually, you know what? Huh, okay. I am going to number them just so that it's easier. Yeah. So this point is A. Okay, this point is B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and L. Okay, so all. This is the last tricky part. Okay. I'm going from point A to D, and again I'm making dashed lines, guidelines, because we need to know where to stop. Okay, so that's just a guideline. So I'm going from A to D. Okay, and I will write it here, A plus D. You're just going to the edge of the triangles, A and D. C and F, so we are looking at the edges of the triangle. C and F. We also now know the center of this triangle if you want to make a design, so we now know the center of the triangles. E plus H. E plus H. I think I like the guidelines. It just looks so much more beautiful. I like to show these lines in my art sometimes. Not always, yeah. Uh, G and J. G and J. G and J. Who already gave up? No one? Okay, okay. <laughs> you did? You didn't even start? <laughs> and then, where was I? I and L. just a bit complicated, you know, college level, why would I do elementary level, you know, that will make me look smart. Okay, K and B, K 
plus B. Hexagons. Let's make these lines. And how do I do that? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so remember this big hexagon lines we made? Okay. So we are extending these lines outside. We are not making it inside. We are taking this hexagon line and extending the line outside till our guideline. Okay, so this straight line, we are extending it till here. Okay, so this is my hexagon that we made in our second stage. And I am extending the line till the guideline that we just made. Hexagon extended the line. Again, the hexagon line, and then we will extend. Should I number these? Should I number these? No? Yes? No? Okay. Okay. Again, the hexagon line right here. We will extend the line outside. We are not making the line inside, we are extending it outside. So we will repeat this, I guess, six times. Let's see, we have the hexagon. The shape is coming up here. Again, the straight line, extended the line. We do the same thing here and extend the line. Just go one um, line at a time, just so that you don't get confused. So I did this first, then I did this line second, third line, now I'll go here, and I'll extend the line outside till our guideline. Okay, so that's our hexagon line, and I'm going outside. All of these points have a purpose. Okay. I extended this. I will extend this. It looks like a kaleidoscope. Whenever I make this, that's how it looks like. Okay, again, this line, I'm extending it outside. So I did this six times, just going around the hexagon, the main hexagon. Just to repeat, I am doing, uh, we made this line, extending the hexagon lines to make our six smaller baby hexagons. 
Okay. Now we need the straight lines, right? What I show you. We need these straight lines, and see they are going here. Okay. So, each we are um, okay. going from A to H. Okay, but we will stop at our hexagon. Okay, so this is our hexagon line. So we are making a line from here to here, from H to here. So we are placing our ruler to A and H. A and H. Okay, then I am making my hexagon line right here. I do the same thing here. A and H. can write it here, A plus H. Now we do B and G. Okay, B and G. Actually, a little bit like this. So B and G, again, two straight lines. You gave up? <laughs> Where are you? Far away? <laughs> I can make it again. Because this will be done soon. I can make it again. Okay. C and uh, J. Right? Yeah. C and J. C and J. C and J, right here. Then C and J. D and I. D and I. Should I wait? Okay, nobody told me I'm going fast, so it's all your fault if I am fast. We're done in one hour. Okay. These two lines would be easy, right? Going straight. So F and K.
f and k, e and l. Okay. You also gave up? <laughs> you, you were holding your head. You have a headache? Okay, so E and L. We see part of hexagons. We also see these drum shapes, tabla shapes coming up. Right? We have the hexagons and the tabla shape. Okay. So now we need to finish the tips of the hexagons. Okay, again, all these points are important, right? Mm, let's start from here, I guess. Okay, nee, let's start from here. Okay, so B and C, okay? We are not making this line, but we are extending the line outside so that we have the tip of these hexagons. So we are extending B and C outside till these guidelines that we made in the beginning. So we are extending this line going outside. We will extend again this tabla shape, right? So, but we will extend the line outside. So we are extending A and L and going outside. So we are extending this line outside. We have our hexagon. Yay, our first hexagon. Sorry. Okay. So we made B and C extend outside, A and L extend outside. Let's do K and J and extend outside. So we are taking this line and extending it outside, like that. I also have um, the pattern here, so hopefully this can help you later. Okay. So from H and I, we will extend the line outside. H and I, we are extending outside. Ooh. 
you both gave up. <laughs> you can do it. You did? Nice. So we kind of made one hexagon, big hexagon. Can you see that? Perfection. OK, so we are taking F and G and then extending the line. Yay, last, last two hexagons. So want to add flowers in there. No, I should not. Then last, D and E, extend them outside. D and E, extend them outside. I think now you will appreciate the geometric arts, huh? That was the whole point, right? We are not done? No? Not done. We need to finish the tablas, the drums. So we have this hexagon, right? So just imagine we are turning the hexagon just a bit. This time we will take this line, the A and B, and extend the line outside. Because we need to finish our pattern. We need to complete the tabla, the drums. Okay, so I took A and B and extended the lines outside. I will go to L and K, extend the lines outside. J and I, then we will extend the line outside, these two points. Inside the smaller hexagons, we will extend the lines outside. In the handouts, this part is in the middle, like I've done before the rest, but it's fine, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter. H and G, I will extend the lines outside. E and F. D and E, right? No, wait, 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 no. D and C, sorry, D and C. D and C and we are done, right? So we have the pattern, right? So this is what we've made. So this is the pattern we have made, right? Uh, then it also has 
the arabesque, which we are not making. <laughs> uh, it's like this. It's like this. Okay. So, just to appreciate, uh, we have made the geometric pattern. Then uh, you can add the arabesque inside it. Uh, you can take this to tiling, you can take this to carving, or me with pastels or paintings. Um, and as is, like, as is, I love these lines. Like, you can see, you know, the effort there is. And yeah, we are done. <laughs> Well, um, that, I have to say, was probably one of the most spectacular things I've ever been a part of. I, I wasn't, um, I can't, I have no technical skills whatsoever. Um, my family is full of surgeons, and I was the, the, high, the gene that just didn't work with her. But I was watching what you guys were doing and, and, and being able to follow throughout, and um, I guess uh, playing uh, Xbox and everything has really paid off. So good, good job, guys. Um, I would like to ask you guys once again to give Sharmin uh, another loud, a round of applause. And thank you very much for being here. You guys have these patterns now and you've seen that now there's another step to it. Um, thank you for your interest in today. Thank you for participating in the workshop. Um, and, and now you have a work of art of your own that you made. And next time you see a ge geometric art pattern, um, whether it's in a manuscript, whether it's on a, a, a dome, whether it's on a, uh, um, an object, whether it's on a ceramic bowl, um, I think now we'll all learn to appreciate the amount of work that artists uh, from any time period go through to create these patterns. Um, and again, Charmin, thank you so much for, for leading us through this. Um, I take, want to take one last moment to thank the Edith O'Donnell Institute of Art History for sponsoring this event and also thanking Arts and Humanities for uh, allowing this event to take place. And I want to thank all of you for taking uh, time out of your busy schedule to, uh, to take part. Um,